Roberto Benigni has done a thing twice, then I think everybody needs to like stand back for a while. Hello, happy Tuesday. We've got some box office for you. We've got Bo Burnham for you. But first, we've got a really cool movie house shout out theater. I am so psyched about this place. It is so rad. It is the Loft Cinema in Tucson, Arizona. Now, this may look familiar to you because back when we were doing our marquee segment, the Loft is a place that you guys would often send us oh, photos right. from. Yes. It's this really cool, like retro futuristic, uh, like movie house, a go-go kind of look <laughs> about it um they are celebrating 50 years um they're doing a really cool series of films that came out in 1972 including like the godfather and cabaret nice. um they are showing the new david cronenberg this week crimes right. of the future um but they do so much cool stuff they do like grease sing-alongs and like the greatest showman sing-alongs they had <laughs> this they show the room a lot but okay. also they had Greg Sestero come and do Ooh. a live script reading of the room and people threw plastic spoons at him. <laughs> he's a sport. <laughs> right? I mean, this is, he's a spork. Um, <laughs> uh, that too. There you go. Um, they have um, a really cool thing where they take this solar powered van and they drive all over the desert to places where they shot Westerns and then oh, they'll really? show that Western outdoors. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. They do all kinds of cool stuff. So they've been they're celebrating 50 years this year. We're thrilled to talk about them. So go check them out. We'll have a link to all of their work below. Um, thank you for hanging out with us this week and teaming up with us. The Loft Cinema. Okay. Top Gun Mavericks box office. Giant. Yes. Giant box office. $156 million over the Memorial Day weekend. It's Tom Cruise's biggest opening ever. Uh, it is a, this weekend was a triumph for Generation X because apparently not only was Top Gun massively successful and like broke the record of Memorial Day weekend openings um, and over like more than 50% of the audience was over the age of 35, which is unheard of mm -hmm. when it comes to big blockbuster openings like this. Um, on top of all of that, uh, Kate Bush's Running Up That Hill is now yes. at number one on iTunes because of Stranger Things. So we did it, everybody. Yes, this is also on my list of news for you is that, yeah, a song from 1985, which features in a little bit in episode one and very prominently in episode four of Stranger Things of this new season is, yeah, Kate Bush is Running Up That Hill. So for all you youngins, you get to learn about how awesome Kate Bush is. Whatever it takes. Yeah. Um, so we are recapping Stranger Things on yes. our Patreon. In case you have not already joined us there, we'd love to see you. We're doing them two at a time. We are doing episodes three and four this Friday. So have you watched it yet, Alonzo? No, not yet. I will. I will. <laughs> well, I don't want to spoil anything for you. Okay. But there's a lot to remember. I have to watch it close to when we do the recap because I have to keep track of 20 major characters at this point. It's very dense. It is. And uh, plot heavy and a lot of stuff no. going on. Um, Bo Burnham, who was not alive yet in 1985. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a movie, I, th I think it's a movie, a special we yes. loved last year was Bo Burnham's Inside. Mm -hmm. It came out exactly a year ago. And then last night, he released on YouTube an extra hour of stuff called the no. Inside Outtakes. Did you watch this yet? I started and then I realized it was like an hour's worth. I was like, okay, I'm going to save this. I, I need to like take it all in. Uh, what's your takeaway? So it's a lot of songs that didn't make it or it's him like working through stuff and watching his process is fascinating. Um, there's a song about a chicken toward the end, which seems very silly in the beginning and mm -hmm. had me near tears toward the end. He he's so he good does at that, that. Like, <clears throat> right? Like he- White woman's Instagram right? Like, by surprise. Yeah, lyrically, like it's so clever and it's playful. And then like somewhere in like, like three quarters of the way through, it will take a turn in a way that is so unexpectedly poignant. He's so yeah. good at that. So you see that, you see various versions of a Jeffrey Bezos song. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's really cool. If, if you're interested in him and in his process, um, it is a lot more of that. So um, we will link to it, but it is on YouTube, the Inside Out Takes. It is an hour more of goodies. 
for you. Um, Can has wrapped up. The Can yes, Film Festival has. has ended. Finally, the new Ruben Ostland film Triangle of Sadness has won yes. the Palme d'Or. He previously won for The Square, so he likes shapes. Uh, well, it's actually, this is his third. Oh, no, no, sorry. No, it's A24's third win. That's right. Do you know when that's coming out? Uh, I don't, but A24 has it. And like I was saying, they, it's their third consecutive Palme d'Or win at Cannes. So they're on a roll. And uh, this, this movie apparently has like lots of poop and puke in it, just so you know. Oh, because they're on a boat? Because they're on a boat. And for okay. other reasons, I'm sure. Bradley Cooper. Uh, you might not <laughs> know this is Bradley Cooper. The picture you are looking at currently is Bradley Cooper. Yes. As Leonard Bernstein. <laughs> I'm real interested to see how this goes. I, I have to admit, I kind of want a 10-year moratorium on movie stars playing other celebrities because I just feel like we're going to get this onslaught now of like, you know, I, it, bad enough that that they gave an Oscar to 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 Rami Malek uh, uh, for... for uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. But then when they gave one to Jessica Chastain for Eyes of Tammy Faye, it's like, oh, come on. So, you know, it, it's it's basically the more like Lon Chaney you can be and change your look and look like somebody else and, you know, imitate a famous person equals great acting. And yeah. not that there haven't been great performances that fall under that category, but they don't always. <laughs> well, this is the work of two-time Oscar winner, Kazuhiro prosthetics expert Kazuhiro. Oh, well, yeah, no, he's great. He, right. he did Jim Carrey's Grinch makeup. Like, this guy knows his stuff. No no shade on the makeup. He, right. It is a transformation, absolutely. I'm just tired of actors feeling like the only way to yes. be taken seriously is to completely, you know, uh, 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 you know, morph into something else. He transformed Charlie Theron into Megyn Kelly for Bombshell. Ah. He transformed Gary Oldman into Winston Churchill for The Darkest Hour. So, another, another biopic oscar <laughs> right right and so that's the thing is like i think it's irresistible for stars to want to challenge themselves and i would argue that bradley cooper is a great actor and has tremendous range beyond how beautiful he is yes right? yes again i'm not i'm like he's I directing I, too yes i haven't mm -hmm. seen a second of this movie i have nope. no judgments about it i'm just saying it is part of an overall trend that i'm already like very questionable about well, bring on the Oscars for book club two, because that's, <laughs> that's coming. <laughs> they gave us wine at the screening of the first one. I don't know what they're getting. I think just shots maybe for this one we'll get. I don't know. So, yeah, this is the, um, the main memory I have of the original book club is it's, they drink a ton of wine and like maybe they talk about a book, but the book <laughs> is Fifty Shades of Grey. Yes. So <laughs> basically it's an excuse for women to get together and just get wasted and talk about their troubles which i guess is what all book clubs are like Probably. so it's a documentary <laughs> um so yeah. yes all the stars are back production has begun on book club two i kind of felt like book club one ended in satisfying fashion but uh, you know this one they're going to italy which to me smacks of like here's how we got them to say yes you know oh. <laughs> so yeah so it's diane keaton jane fonda candace bergen mary steenburgen are the the leads yeah. and yeah they're all they're all literally on board for this one so <laughs> Now they can drink Italian wine. There um, you go. Let's stay in Italy with Pinocchio, the yet another live mm -hmm. action Pinocchio. This is Robert Zemeckis' Pinocchio with Tom Hanks as Geppetto. It is going to premiere on Disney Plus on September 18th, and the teaser mm -hmm. is out now. I thought we weren't doing this anymore. I thought we had exhausted all the Disney cartoons that were going to be made into live action movies, but apparently not. And I really thought like Robert Zemeckis was going to maybe take a step back from the effects heavy, you yeah. know, but I guess not that either. So yeah. no more Pinocchios. Like didn't Roberto Benigni already do a couple of these? Like twice. I don't need any more. Yes. He's, been too, like, look, if Robert, if Roberto Benigni has done a thing twice, then I think everybody needs to like stand back for a while. So uh -huh. I don't know why this one, I mean, yes, I, obviously this one's going to have when you wish upon a star and there are no strings on me and all that stuff from the original Disney movie. But beyond that, I think, yeah, this property is just a tad played out at this point. Yes. And uh, Rachel Zegler is going to star in the Hunger Games prequel. Speaking of things we have seen a whole lot of already, um, there's a Hunger Games prequel. It is called The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. It'll be out in November of 2023. <sighs> She's the star of that. 
a prequel. Yeah, and and apparently I thought did you apparently they're also threatening a prequel series for Breaking Bad. Why? Which, like when which, he was still teaching in high school? Exactly. The whole point of Breaking Bad is that up until he had a cancer diagnosis, he lived a very boring life as a high school science teacher. So it's like, you know, unless it's going to be like hanging with Mr. Cooper or something, I don't know what the point of a Breaking Bad prequel is. 